Welcome back to Stanford's Open Office Hours. I'm Rick Banks, and I'd like to thank you first for all of your great questions. Chibuzo wanted to know about the title of the book. The title comes from a sixth grade or an elementary school student in Washington, D.C., who was expressing his view that based on the people he knew, black people didn't get married. Only white people got married. And that's a cultural sense that many people have. So I wanted to capture that in the title. I also like the title because it has another meaning. It has a double meaning. And the other meaning is, well, is marriage for anyone? Jeannie asks about whether there is a social stigma against the idea, the idea of white men and black women being together. And the answer there is yes. There is still such a stigma. Even as rates of interracial marriage increase substantially, there's a stigma related to African Americans in particular in interracial relationships. Part of that stigma comes from the black community, and it's enforced in the everyday relationships of African Americans. This stigma is especially intense for black women because black women are assumed to be responsible for the family, for raising the next generation of children, and it's often thought that black women owe it to black men who are often less successful than they are. Grant, Jan, and Saad ask if there's a connection between religious beliefs and marriage. And the answer is yes, there is. People who attend church regularly and who are more religious are also more likely to marry. Mike asks if there is a connection between socioeconomic status and the marriage decline. And indeed, there is. One of the Pivotal developments we've seen with respect to marriage and family over the past half century is that marriage has become much more associated with socioeconomic status, with income and education, than it had been in, say, 1950. In 1950, the marital experiences of the poor and the working class and the affluent were not that different. Everyone married and most people stayed married. Now, the experiences differ greatly by socioeconomic class. Steve posed a question about the relation between marriage and wealth. This issue has been studied the most with men, where we find that men who earn more money are more likely to marry. Men who earn more money are more likely to stay married. The underlying intuition here is that men who don't earn a living, uh, men who are unemployed, for example, or who earn very little, are not very attractive marriage partners. Kimberly relays her own experience as a mother and wife who has become the primary breadwinner in her family. And she wonders whether that's setting a bad example for her children who see their mom working and their dad not working. Now, overall, it is the case that when the husband is not working, the couple is more likely to divorce than when the husband is working. That's one way in which gender roles have not changed as much as we might like to believe. But in Kimberly's case, of course, if they are okay with their role reversal, then it's fine. The children will not be harmed by that. In fact, the children are probably benefited by seeing that her parents can structure their lives in a way that works for their family and in a way that's optimal for the children. Martha wrote to ask if the thesis of my recent Wall Street Journal article applies to Latinas. A Wall Street Journal essay was titled, An Interracial Fix for Black Marriage. And in there, it concluded that if more black women open themselves to interracial relationships, that would give them more power in their relationships with black men. The reasoning there is that if, they, uh, entered, if black women entered an integrated relationship market, they would have more options. And as they developed more options, then black men would lose some of the leverage that they currently have in relationships with black women. This theory does indeed apply to Latinas. The basic theory is that relationships form within a market and that one's position or power within the market depends in part on the options that one has. So the theory applies across racial groups. The circumstances, though, for Latinos and African Americans are quite different. African Americans face the most lopsided gender balance of any group. Anjali also wants to know whether my marital status has affected my research. You know, your personal experiences at some level, they have to shape your research. Uh, 
there's no simple way in which my marriage uh, or my wife has shaped my research. Uh, other than that, she has read every word of the book and has given her approval. Uh, my book is dedicated to my wife, and without her, I wouldn't be able to raise my children nearly as well as we do. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the benefits that derive from having a partner in that regard. At the same time, you know, the book is not a book about my personal experiences. It's not a book about my personal perspectives or my opinions. It's really a book that fuses the best available academic research with the experiences of scores of men and women that I interviewed across the country. Thank you for joining me on Stanford's Open Office Hours. It's been a pleasure to interact with all of you. If you'd like to learn more about my book, Is Marriage for White People, you can find it at the website, ismarriageforwhitepeople.stanford.edu.